Hello, everybody. I'm Seth Berkley, uh, CEO of Gavi the Vaccine Alliance. We're here for the UN General Assembly in New York and wanting to have a conversation with two important partners of Gavi. On my right is Raz Punjabi, who is the uh, mm -hmm. founder and CEO of Last Mile Health. On my left is Chuck Slaughter, who is the uh, founder and chair of the board of Living Goods. Um, both of them have been involved with a project called Audacious Project, and we'll hear some of that in our discussions. Yeah. Let me start now with Raj. You've dedicated your life to community health. Why is it important? Community health care is an important part of the primary health care agenda, and it's critical both for primary health care services as well as part of that routine immunization services. We, yeah. We know that cause, partly because of your work at Gavi. Uh, in, in the last 18 years, it's been over 700 million uh, vaccines distributed and, and kids vaccinated. At the end of this year, you all will have contributed uh, directly to um, saving 10 million lives. And, and at the same time, Gavi has, has told us um, that this is not enough. Uh, we know that 19 million kids still go without vaccines every year. And a lot of them are living in hard to reach uh, communities. So how do you provide health care in that kind of setting when the world is also facing a shortage of health workers? We're projecting by 2030 there will be 18 million health workers the world will be short of gaps uh, that we need to close. So the idea of a community health worker um, and a community health system around that worker is absolutely vital. So I've been excited about community health workers because uh, we think they're one of the most important ways to expand that coverage and, and frankly lift the standard of primary health care in those settings. Great, Raj. Yeah. Um, Chuck, let me turn to you. Yeah. Um, what do you think the role of technology is in doing this? I'd echo what Raj said. First of all, we've made great progress in vaccines. Let's let's be clear, you know, um, when this journey started 30 years ago, virtually no kids in these countries had access to these kind of vaccines. 1974, 5% yeah. had yeah. access. And now 75 to 80% of these kids are getting vaccinated. But to get this last 20%, we have to be a lot sharper, and digital technology in particular now will enable us to pinpoint the individual households and individual kids who have either been left out or who dropped out, um, and now allow us to focus an individual community health worker to make sure that they get access to that vaccine. We have to bring a large global health establishment on this next wave of innovation. Um, the last wave was driven by advances in medicine. The next wave is going to be, I think, driven by advances in, in technology. We have to persuade the policymakers. We have to persuade the funders. Um, and then we have to train um, and retrain a whole, you know, the whole um, uh, health system how to use technology to meet the goals. Maybe, Raj, moving back to you, yeah. when we talk about community health workers, in some places we're talking about them actually doing vaccination. In some places we're talking about them doing demand for vaccination or advocating for vaccines. I know you've thought a lot about how you might train uh, community health workers better, bring them better into the system. You want to say something about that? Sure, sure. And I think here, too, technology plays an important role. So one of the collaborations that, that Living Goods, Last Mile Health, and Gavi have, along with our ministry partners in Uganda, Kenya, and Liberia, is to leverage the smartphone so that we're offering community health workers within the confines of a ministry policy if they're uh, the, the best in content. So the, the future of global health, especially if you're focused on equity, uh, be it in rural areas or elsewhere, has to harness both our, our, um, this blend of modern technology with the best of human compassion. And that's where, uh, why we're excited about this collaboration we have with, with, with you. Yeah. Chuck, yeah. Um, let me just finish with yeah. one more question yeah. for yeah. you, which sure. is, um, as we think about political commitment, mm -hmm. how does mm -hmm. this play mm -hmm. into that? Because yeah. at the end of the day, one of the challenges has been getting yeah. you know, yeah. countries all the way down to the lowest level yeah. to want and to drive, or even frankly to demand this. Yes. Do you see this as part of uh, what mm -hmm. your role is at Last Mile Health? You know, to, you know, to make universal health coverage, to make universal immunization coverage a reality you have to have strong political buy-in at every level. And again, it's an interesting place, a role that technology can play for us in this, which is the technology allows, allow, that we're putting in place will allow us to track the immunization record of every child with their name and a GPS location, and in many cases, a telephone number. So we're creating a chain of transparency and accountability um, from a funder all the way to an individual beneficiary. Mm. So funders 
you know, whether you're a gov local government funder or a bilateral multilateral funder, you'll be able to see that the money you're investing is, is delivering down to the individual level. All the endeavors we're involved in involve people delivering for patients. Um, and in the end, it's a managerial problem. And the technology gives us tools to see how these remote health workers are doing in faraway places in real time to identify who's doing great and who needs help and to target the limited resources we have where they're most needed. So um, I want to thank Chuck and I want to thank Raj for having this discussion. I think what you're seeing is, um, is new innovation, new ways of working. We tend to think of community health workers as kind of the lowest com denominator of healthcare delivery, but these new tools, these new ways of working have a, a real ability to both empower those workers and change the dynamics to create a much better system for all involved and particularly to reach the unreached, which of course is the core to what we're trying to do. So thank you both and I thank the audience for joining us for this discussion. Thanks, Seth.